Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So I've been a YouTuber for a year and a half and I'm yet to get a VPN sponsor. So let's create our own VPN using a Raspberry Pi and WireGuard. Speaking of sponsors, this video is brought to you by EasySSH, the easiest way to secure your SSH endpoints. EasySSH removes the need to create, manage, and delete SSH keys by using your corporate identity to issue short-term SSH certificates. SSH certificates are native to SSH authentication. It means that you can use them to authenticate to a small IoT device up to to your 400 core cloud VM. Check the link in the description to request a demo and get one month for free. So now let's easy SSH into a Raspberry Pi. First thing we have to do is install WireGuard. This is as simple as just running sudo app install WireGuard. As you can see, I cheated a little bit. I already had it installed just to make the video a little bit faster. The next thing we have to do is run this Perl command and don't worry, all the commands and everything are down in the description down below. So you can just copy and paste. Just remember to run sudo. And now we have to reboot. As always, you have to be nice and say please by adding sudo. All right, so now that the Pi rebooted, now we just have to check that the IPv4 worked. So we're gonna run the following command. And if you have a one, that means it worked. Now to stop typing sudo every time, we're just gonna run this command. It will basically elevate the whole command line as sudo. Then we have to go into our wire guard directory, and then we have to generate the keys. So this basically is calling the wire guard command to generate a key and save it as a server private key. And then the public key, save it as server public key. You never share the private key with anybody. The private key always stays in your server and the public key is the thing that you give your clients. So in here, we're just gonna cat both just because we are gonna need both, but obviously never share the private key with anybody. All right, so I'm just gonna copy the public key and private key by hand to have them here in my notes and I can use them later. All right, so next thing we have to do is create the WireGuard configuration. In this case, I'm just gonna use Nano, but you can use your favorite text editor. And it has to be called wg0.conf. And in here, I'm just copying and pasting it, but I'll go through it and as always, this is down below, so you can just copy and paste and just modify it. The address space, we just created a private address space. Listening port, this is the port that I want to listen to. You have to make sure that your router will be port forwarding that port into your Pi. So like, just make sure that one is a match. DNS, I just use the 1.1.1.1 DNS. The private key, this is the one that we copied from above, the server private key that we just created. And then in here you are creating like, uh, IP table rules, like firewall rules, to allow uh, the traffic in. The only thing is you have to change this. As, as you can see here, is, uh, I guess I'll have to make it smaller. As, as you can see here, the uh, WLAN 0 or ETH, based on if you're using Ethernet or Wireless, in this case, I'm using wireless. So I'm just gonna leave the WLAN zero in both the post up and the post down. And then here's where you add your peers. So every time you add a new client to it, you'll have to add it and create its own IP address. I'm gonna cover that in the next video. Make sure to subscribe down below to see how to actually add the client. So after we do that, we're gonna just save it. And then we're gonna run the following command that will basically make WireGuard run every time the Raspberry Pi is started. Then the following commands are gonna make it that only root can access this folder and run this. This is because it has your private key and everything, so you don't want any user to be able to access them. And then after that, you can start the service with wg quick up and your config file. And to take it down, you just change the up for down. And you can always get the, the status of your VPN by having it by running WG. And as you can see here, we have the public key, what listening port we're on and how many peers we allow. We only allow this peer that has this public key. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.